class is complete. Solid amount of meals consumed. Actually, a little bit too much. A little bit too much. Uh, I'm at about 1,900 calories eaten for the day. And it's only 5.30, so I got to be careful. I have got to be freaking careful tonight because I don't want to overshoot, you know? I mean, come on. <laughs> the only thing stopping you from losing weight is eating too many calories. And I guess vice versa, more of a tip that I'm more prone to say is uh, the only thing keeping you from gaining weight is not eating enough calories. You know, yeah, you can do all the cardio you want. Well, actually... I know you do do all the cardio you want, zero, but whatever, right? That's not going to change whether or not you gain or lose body fat. It's all about the uh, the caloric surplus or caloric deficit. But getting on the topic of the lift, I got chest, side delts, and I, I kind of want to start doing a little bit of front delts. Not a lot, because my front delts are already pretty developed, but I'm going to throw in a little bit of front delts I think. Eh, I'll see, you know, whatever. But basic plan of the lift is not going to change. Chest first after a substantial tricep rotator cuff, slight back, and a little bit of a chest warm up on the cables. And then I'll, you know, do my first set of incline something, probably bench, potentially. Well, actually, no, yeah, probably just incline bench. I would say incline dumbbell, but the dumbbells only go up to one to thirties, which is a little bit below my pay grade. I got to go a little heavier than that, but mid lift, I could bust out some one thirties for a solid set, especially after some pre exhaustion where I won't need so much weight sort of following the, um, the logic of squats yesterday, but you know, four sets ish of heavy pressing, maybe do some cable pressing then finish with pec deck or something like that. I know for a fact that that's going to add up to a solid chest pump, but I don't have to do a specific number of exercises or a specific number of sets on each exercise. You know, I can kind of do whatever I feel like in a sense. Now I did not start off working out with that mentality. You know, I kind of have a plan of to do like five sets of flat bench. Uh, so this was a time when I was doing way too much volume but I'd be doing five sets of flat bench, five sets of machine press, five sets of pec deck, five sets of cape. Like I had a specific workout kind of planned out. I had it written out beforehand and I just went in, did it and then left. But kind of over time, I think, you know, as a beginner, that is very fucking effective. That is good for you. Build training experience. Uh, I mean, I've, honestly, that's the main thing. Just fucking build some training experience. And then over time, you should sort of start to develop a sense of like, oh, okay, I'm not really feeling my chest too much with this movement. And I know I would feel a little bit more on this one. Right? And then as that sort of evolution progresses, I think probably the end goal is you go in and you just sort of subconsciously know which movements to do. Like maybe like for whatever reason, I think to myself, Okay, I think two sets of incline barbell would be good. Finish them. And then based off of that, kind of determine where to go next. Like maybe I want to do some cable flies next instead of press, whatever. And then get to a point where I'm fully pumped. And I'll just know like, okay, that was it. I've completely stimulated the muscle. I don't need to do any extra work and tire myself out for no reason. Let's be done. That's, that's probably the end goal of the enlightened lifter. You know, I'm not there yet, so I, I'm still going to stick to my eight sets of chest, eight sets of side delts, and then a couple of sets of front delts, just a little bit. But you, know, you should always kind of keep an open mind to trying new shit. But you sort of have to couple that with enough discipline to do one thing for a little while, see if you kind of develop a, uh, you know, a, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Like, see if you can find a cause and effect correlation. Like, let's say you've been training, doing whatever split, whatever split, whatever workout routine. Let's just say, hypothetically, you have a routine. You've been doing it for months. And guess what? You're getting fucking huge. Should you completely flip your training upside down? No fucking chance. What you're doing is working. And I'm not saying that 
you know, oh, the guy who's going to get big is doing this routine and he's doing it in this exact way. Oh, he's not allowed to do that. You know, it's, you really kind of have to figure this shit out for yourself. But if you're doing something that works, keep doing it. It's working. But on the opposite side of that spectrum, if you've been doing a routine for months and you've seen, you know, no progress, then, you know, just based on that result, all that means is everything you've been doing is only enough to maintain your current state. So even if it's fucking smart, even if it's scientifically justified or fits the general consensus of the fitness community, if, if some shit is not working for you, then you have to adapt in some way or the other. And the more consciously and accurately you can analyze your own situation and your own habits and diet and training and sleep and hydration and everything that's kind of going into what's going to affect your build and your physique, then you should be able to notice any glaring holes, right? Let's say someone's training hard, getting pumps every fucking day getting a good amount of sleep, staying well hydrated, but they're not gaining any weight. Guess what? They're probably just not eating enough food, you know? That's a very uh that's a very basic situation, but it could be a little bit more complicated, you know? Maybe you got fucking headaches in the gym so you can't train so hard. You haven't been fucking taking in enough electrolytes, so you're dehydrated, you know? There's all Those are those are just super basic situations. You know, and that's your responsibility as a lifter to be able to figure out, you know, what do I need to change? to get the results that I want, you know, and the information is out there. There's fucking, there's more workout videos and workout split analyzations and whatever than anybody could ever watch. So, you know, even though there's a ton of information, you've got to be able to figure out what makes sense. And I mean, like, fuck man, that's on you, you know? So I, uh, I think I've talked enough. I'm starting to feel the beta alanine kick in. I, um, I'm just going to my school's gym, which is only like two blocks away from my house. So whenever I lift here, the car talk is kind of fucking fake. I'm just driving around the fucking campus before I actually go lift, but you know, whatever. I'm not going to deprive you. Come on. That'd be fucking crazy. So I'm going to warm up and then we can jump to, if I had to hypothesize, incline bench. But I guess we'll see in a few seconds. I'm going to call it at three plates. Uh, I could probably go just a touch heavier, but it keeps kind of tweaking my forearm just a touch. Or maybe not tweaking, but I can kind of feel my forearm a little bit. I've got some kind of nerve pinch, something or other. So I don't want to push it too hard. But, you know, three plates, it's not nothing. So let's just get hyped up and throw this shit around. I should have gone for one more, but I didn't want to have to re-rack it. I'll get a spot for the next set, but let's do at least one more. I think that's enough of that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, let's, uh, let's do something else. All right, similarly with incline bench, I mean, there's nothing much to discuss here. Um, I will say this, with these reps, I'm probably gonna be more inclined to do full range of motion, just because I can really squeeze at the top. Like when I do incline bench, you just don't really get that squeeze that you do with like a machine press. 
Because an incline bench with the barbell, your hands don't come any closer towards each other. Whereas even though it's very slight, there's still a converging action here, which is kind of adding some extra, let's say some extra stimulus. But let me just pick a hype, so, hype uh, if I can lose my mind, let's pick a hyped up song and then throw it around. pretty good. Uh, let's do something. I kind of have to base my exercise selection off of what's available, which like it's not the worst case scenario, but you do kind of have to have some forethought to think like, okay, I can't do machine press, what can I do instead? And with that, I mean, again, it comes with experience. Okay, I am strapped for fucking chest equipment. I must have just been kind of lucky the last couple times I've been coming here for chest because every chest press, every pec deck, every cable, not ideal. But that's just me complaining like a baby. So let's throw the stack around here for maybe one or two or however many I feel like, you know? If I can find some cables, let's go do that. But if not, I'll just come back. All right, we're back to Old Faithful. I would have preferred to find some cables for some bent over cable press, but what are you gonna do? So I'm fine coming back to this. I am gonna go a little bit lighter because I'm fucking getting worn out. And that's how your workout should fucking, well, I won't say that is how it should look, but that's how I like mine to look, right? I wanna use my heaviest weight in the beginning and then as the lift progresses, I want the weights that I'm using to get lower and lower and lower because my muscles, as they get worked, if I'm really hitting them hard, they shouldn't get fucking stronger, right? They should get weaker. So by that logic, that's why I like starting off usually with my heaviest compound lift. After a proper warm-up, I want to start with the most weight I can handle and then go down from there. Like, I'm not saying you're not going to get a good workout by starting a little lighter, creeping up to like a top set, 
and then come back down. But that's just kind of my style. I don't want to finish with this, but if I have to, I will. But I'm gonna look for some other kind of movement to finish with. I didn't love the feeling of that machine press, at least not right at that moment. Like I liked it for the first two sets I did in the beginning of the lift, but I didn't want to do that as my finisher. Usually I want to do some kind of fly, just get a big stretch, good squeeze. Really just a movement where I know I'm gonna really fucking finish off the pump well. So I think a set of cable flies, drop set it into bent over flies. Well, I was about to say this will be a good ender, but historically, it has been a good fucking ender. You know, this is pretty much one of my classic finishers. Let's just hope I don't have to wait for the posing room. All right, there we go. So unfortunately the posing room was fucking taken. Not that it's like, well, obviously it's not the posing room, it's just a little space, but it's pretty much the posing room, come on. It's common knowledge for anybody that frequents this particular gym, is that's where you go to check the pump. For whatever reason, the architect or the light designer, they were cooking when they made that little side room. I wish they could keep that fucking, you know, keep that up for the whole gym, but what are you gonna do? So let's see what kind of pump we've got. Oh, not bad. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah, go through it, man. Hit it. Hit your course. All right, that was a fucking pretty solid pose. Let's just do one more and then get back to the gym because I've still got to do side delts and just a touch of front delts. Let's get out of here. All right, just for simplicity's sake for me, since I'm only gonna do this side laterals and then maybe like a shoulder press, I'll just show, I'll just show one set of each instead of all four back to back, because it really is kind of just the same set. So I'm gonna sit here for four of these side laterals. It's not like I think you have to go super heavy on your shoulders, but you know, if you can do reps with manageable form, you're not really swinging around too bad, and you're not feeling your traps come into play too much, that's kind of a telltale sign you're going too heavy on lateral raises, is if you're getting a lot of trap activation. You know, if you're feeling mainly side delts, well, go as heavy as you can. But 
I'm gonna sit here for four and then we can cut to uh, dumbbell lateral raises. So four sets of the machine lateral raises turned into six. So I just have one more here and then shoulder press. Okay, that's enough. Fuck. So someone rewrapped the 50s on the spot where the 20s go. And I'm not gonna instantly jump to conclusions. Maybe they're dyslexic. You know, two zero is very similar to five zero. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But let's move on to shoulder press machine. Now this is a rare freaking sight. Sam on the shoulder press machine. You know, I'm not gonna say that you don't need to do front delts, but for the most part, people are gonna have overly developed front delts and underdeveloped rear delts. Nobody really slacks on side delts. Everyone wants to span their lateral raises. But if you do a lot of incline, and honestly, just any pressing in general, you're not gonna be able to help but get some front delt activation. So even though this is the whole stack, well, no, what am I really trying to say here? Even though I haven't done any front delt work, I mean, for fucking years, they're still fucking strong. Because every time I do incline bench, they come into play. Every time I do even dumbbell curls, the fact that I'm holding the weight in front of me means that my front delts are activating to keep the weight from like coming back towards my center of mass, if you can imagine. You know, if you kind of understand how like pendulums work. Your front delts get activated a lot. So, I would not call it a flawed approach to bias probably more rear and side delts in your shoulder workouts. You know, spam your lateral raises. There's a reason that joke, well, a lot of jokes about like fitness or whatever, that's the one that I like the most because it's fucking true. You know, all I fucking did was eight sets of side laterals. Now sure, I did two kinds, but still I'm just going from here to here with load and pumping them up. So I'm gonna finish shoulders off with just two sets here. Um, really just get a burn, like whatever. I'm just trying to activate them. Uh, honestly, it's not even like I'm really trying to destroy them right now. I just kind of want to get a feel for them a little. So I'll do two sets here and then we can go check the shoulder pump. check the shoulder pump and then freaking roll oh. All right. <laughs> Fuck. let's see how shoulders are looking they feel pretty pumped just standing here but you know feeling and visuals are two different things so yeah this lift definitely went on a little bit 
longer than I probably would have liked. But not because I, like, did any more volume than normal. I just kind of had to wait for some shit. You know. Sometimes you, uh, well, there's factors outside your control that you've got to be capable of dealing with if you want to have a good lift. I always think it's fucking kind of weird when people will tell me, like, oh, I'm planning on starting legs. Eh, all the leg machines are taken. Eh, I'll just do arms instead. Like, I guess if you seriously can't do legs, then maybe swap it. But I've never had... I've never gone in to do, like, a specific muscle group. And then, you know, me waiting for, like, some machine or something made me switch. You know, just fucking deal with it. But, let's see, uh... Oh. We got some fucking shoulders poking out. Dude, fuck yeah, man. No. Oh. Maybe front double, just kind of for fucking fun. Oh, then, okay, yeah, I almost forgot most muscular exists. What am I talking about? Oh, All right. Chest pumped, shoulders pumped. Plus a little bit of front delt. You know, who doesn't fucking love it? So, even though the rear delts aren't even pumped, there's still this fucking roundness up here. Right, like see me, typically I stand like this, I've got bad posture. But when I really stand up like this and pull my shoulders back, like having my fucking rear delts poke out almost like behind my traps, that is, that's what you want to fucking aim for for sure when it comes to your rear delt development. You know, I can't stress it enough. Even though I fucking did all sides and front, rear delts, I think, are what are really gonna distinguish your look, kind of your build from other people. I'm even, I'm even, even just like a dude with the same arms, with the same chest, with the same back, right? Let's say one guy has real big shoulders, nice and round, plus he's got the capped rear delts, right? If there's another guy with flatter shoulders, the difference is gonna be pretty fucking noticeable. And the guy with smaller shoulders is kinda of just gonna look smaller too, you know? Like, I'm all for just growing everything all the time. Big chest, big arms, big shoulders, big legs. Like, that's what I want. But I still kinda of want it in proportion, you know what I'm saying? So, right? If you kinda of have the eye for that sort of thing, you should be able to tell. Like, make, do this exact pose, like find some good lighting, take a look at yourself, an honest look and think, okay, how do my rear delts look? And then also think, okay, how often have I been really training my rear delts? So, as long as you have a fucking unbiased uh, view of that situation, more than likely you've got a fucking call to action to spam some face pulls, some reverse pec decks and whatever. But, we're done. I'm gonna go sit in the calf machine for a little bit, get a calf pump. Daily calves are back. I've been slacking, so I'm getting back on the eight sets at the end of my lift, kind of grind. But, I mean, I'm not gonna record it, so let's just cut to the car. Let's freaking get out of here. All right, so chest, side delts, front delts, and a touch of calves. What more can you ask for? What more can you freaking ask for? So, plan now is get back to the crib. I've had a flank steak and sous vide for fucking five hours at this. Well, actually, I think more like four and change. Dude, I tell you what, you can get a ribeye or something like that. You know, just throw in the cast iron, whatever. It'll be pretty tender. But, dude, when I fucking. So, I've made a couple of flanks in the ribeye. Well, no, I'm talking about a couple of flanks on the cast iron and they're tough, man. Flank is a cuffed cuff. 
Flank is a tough cut of meat. But dude, leaving the freaking flank in the sous vide, it get, I, it's freaking tender, man. I'm not eating a flank steak. I'm eating a god dang filet. So I'm excited to eat that. I had, um, well, actually I had one earlier today too. So I made them at the same time and I just had one, you know, a little bit earlier. So a little bit less time, but it was a pound and, uh, it was 1.4 pounds. So about 120 grams of protein for the whole thing, but I'm not going to eat that whole thing at once. So I cut it in half when I seasoned it through each one in the Ziploc. So now I get my second helping. Uh, what am I going to couple it with? I don't even know. I don't have a lot of food to eat left. Uh, let's let's pull up the macros and let's pull up the stupid simple macro tracker and see what I'm working with for the rest of the night. Uh, oh yeah. So, all right. Nine twenty. I did a considerable amount of yapping, just shooting some shit after that lift. Very enjoyable. But it's I'm fucking hungry now. So nine twenty. I've got about. 750 calories left, 100, 100 grams of protein left. That's pretty good. So I'll be able to do the steak plus something else. And then about 70 grams of carbs left. Oh, you know what that's making me think of? I could potentially, I'm starting to think this is what I'm going to do. I'm thinking that half ish pound of flank, a bowl of ramen, coupled with I don't know maybe I'll just make some ground beef too to finish off the remaining let's see 0.7 pounds of steak that's going to end up being about 60 grams of protein 65 so that means I've got another 50 to play with yeah I can do another half pound of flank or no another half pound of ground beef that'll be good yeah so I'm thinking flank now and then bowl of ramen plus some ground beef that'll be perfect and then i'm out i can just go to bed so luckily midterms are kind of cooling off right now so i don't have too many academic responsibilities <coughs> oh. so i just get freaking chill for the most part that's sweet so cardio in the morning before well, tomorrow I've got most of my classes. I kind of, I don't love an even spread. Holy shit, fucking Jay Walker. Uh, I don't love an even spread of classes throughout the week. So instead of doing like two on Monday and two on Tuesday and three on Wednesday, I just do pretty much all of them on Tuesday and Thursday. And then I only have one on Wednesday and sometimes Monday. It, get, it gets canceled sometimes. So tomorrow I'm going to be out of the house for pretty much the whole fucking day, just like back in high school, you know? So I'm probably going to prep some, I'll probably prep some food to bring with me. I'm not perfectly, uh, or not perfect. I'm not super concerned with like being full all the time as I would be on a bulk just because, you know, I'm trying to cut down the name of the game right now is trying to limit the amount of food I'm eating. So I don't mind going, you know, even like five, six hours in the day without eating something. I don't think you're going to fucking have muscle peel off your frame if you don't eat every two hours. You know, at the end of the day, if you eat your protein in a reasonably spread manner, you know, you have some at breakfast, lunch, dinner ish, you're fine. Don't, uh, don't get concerned about catabolism like that. Uh, at least for the most part, you know, for the general public, but you know, I definitely want to eat something. I'd rather be moderately full throughout the day than just like starving throughout the day. And because, you know, if you, uh, if you try to like, this is sort of like a classic approach to dieting that people will, I've heard sort of brought up before. It's like people will justify kind of eating like a lot of sweets at once at night because they say like, oh, I was good today. Like if you've ever heard somebody say, oh, I was good today. I can have this. Like, oh, I didn't eat too much, too many calories today. I can have a lot at night. And, and there's nothing inherently like, so what I'm really trying to say is that little, oh, I was good today. So I can have this, that little, I can have this meal counteracts the whole fucking day for the most part, assuming that 
more often than not, that little, oh, I deserve this. It's going to just completely counteract whatever deficit you might've been maintaining during the day. You know, for just the general do, like as a little piece of advice for someone trying to lose body fat, it's not about fucking starvation. Right? It's about satiation. You know, it's about eating foods that make you kind of feel full, but don't have too much calories. You know, you're not going to catch me fucking eat a legit PB and J right now that I'm, you know, cutting down, but you will catch me slamming four little peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with a little bit of a catch, right? Cause it's not straight up bread. It's some live carb, smart, low carb keto bread with like three grams of carbs each. And instead of normal peanut butter, it's PB fit, right? A powdered peanut butter, which has a ton less fat, right? And you just kind of reconstitute it with water. And then it's not fucking normal as jelly. It's like sugar free jelly or no sugar added, whatever, like diet soda, all that kind of stuff. Like that stuff is going to add up just by taking your normal diet and trying to make substitutions from, you know, full sugar, full carb options to like the diet, whatever, you know, assuming it doesn't like mess with you or anything. Cause I've heard some people say like, you know, diet soda kind of, well, I think this is placebo. People say diet soda gives them headaches. I think they just don't drink any electrolytes throughout the day and they get headaches already. Mm. But you know, uh, some of the keto breads, it definitely tastes a little different. It tastes a little off, but for the most part, it's, I wouldn't say a one-to-one -one replacement in terms of like your enjoyment, but it's not bad. It is not freaking bad, right? The amount of, uh, well, I say gains, but I guess I technically mean like losses, uh, like the benefits we'll say that you'll get from doing your little keto bread sandwiches or, you know, your low fat mayonnaise, your no sugar barbecue sauce, right? the benefits you're going to get are totally going to outweigh the drawbacks of like, Oh, this tastes kind of funny. Well, whatever. It's not that bad. Uh, but that's in the context of trying to lose body fat, right? Or maybe just get a touch leaner. If you're bulking up, well, if I'm bulking up, you're never going to catch me drink a diet soda. You're never going to catch me do like a low carb PB&J or whatever. Right? When you're bulking up and you're trying to gain weight, you're... <laughs> You should fucking bias the full calorie options. Right? You need more energy for your freaking frame to use to deposit muscle onto your fucking muscle bellies. So tomorrow is going to be back in rear delts plus calves at the end. And then I think it goes without saying fucking 30 minutes of cardio in the seated bike in the morning. Uh, I will admit for me, it's not very difficult to add that to the routine just because for me, the gym is literally like two blocks away from where I live. So I can just ride my bike over there. Uh, but you know, if you've got to drive like 30 minutes to the gym or something along those lines, it's going to be in your best interest just to fucking get a cardio bike on Craigslist or something, man. Put it in the, uh, well, I've got my little you know, college guy apartment. So it's not that weird for me to keep it in the kitchen, but you know, at home I've got it in the little, at my parents' house, I've got it in the basement with like a little treadmill, you know, save yourself some time because a whole hour of transit to do 30 minutes of cardio. You're right. That is kind of fucking silly, but that doesn't mean you just shouldn't do your cardio at all. You know, come on, that's fucked up, man. So one thing you guys also kind of bring up too is, uh, I was about to reference it when I said I ride my bike to the gym to sit on the bike, right? Like, why don't you just, why, why don't you just ride your bike around for your cardio? Well, it's because I can't fucking play on my phone if I'm just riding around on my bike, you know? Plus, in the outside world, man, it's wet. It's fucking cold. I want to do my cardio in a controlled environment. Build up a nice sweat, you know? So I get what you're saying. And if that's your fucking mindset, then yeah, who cares, man? Screw me for going to the gym to do my cardio. Do your little, do a jog. Do you, uh, do a little run around the neighborhood. Get on your, grab your dad's cycling bike out of the garage. Start pedaling. You know, do whatever, do whatever you got to do. 
And it doesn't have to be dedicated cardio per se, you know, the, the whole point of cardio is just to raise your heart rate to an elevated level for a constant period of time. So, you know, if you got a Fitbit on or something and you can get your heart rate up into like the, uh, you know, the low to mid hundreds, right. Playing basketball or doing whatever that's cardio, man. You know, when you guys comment like, oh, I play two hours of soccer a day. Does that count as cardio? I'd count that as cardio. You know, that's fucking being active. You're working your cardiovascular system. You're huffing and puffing, right? That shit counts. But for the most part, I know you guys aren't doing it. And I think that you only have benefits to gain. You only have positives to reap by way of adding cardio into your routine. So it's been a little bit, it's been a little while since I've referenced the cardio timing. So I think that's worth noting. Now you got pretty much, yeah, you got pretty much four options on when to do your cardio. Basically, right? You can do it in the morning when you wake up, you can do it right before you work out. Like as the, like 30 minutes, do your cardio. And then you start the actual weight session. You could do it right after you finish your weight session. So let's say I just finished chest and shoulders. You know, people can do cardio 30 minutes after that, like immediately. Or you could, you could, uh, you could come back to the gym after your lift and do it at night. I've pretty much seen uh, those are like the main scenarios which go down. So I'll start from worst to best. Directly after your workout. No, no, no. Well, Honestly, I think these are probably evenly matched. It's not that ideal. If you do your cardio directly after your workout, I feel like you're kind of compromising your recovery in a sense. You know, it's not like I'm a firm believer of like the anabolic window where it's like you finish your workout and you need to get food into your system right then or you're not going to make gains. It's not like that. But you got to think post-workout, what did you just do? You stressed your body in a very specific, methodical way. So what do you want to do after you stress something? You want to recover it. You want to build it back up. What sense does it make to just keep stressing yourself, keep wearing down your fucking energy stores after your weight session by doing cardio? You know, after I finish a lift, I, I want to chill. I want to jumpstart the recovery process, get some food into my system, uh, or at least, you know, just kind of like chill and eat later, right? Like I did today. So, you know, not really a huge fan of that. Then you can do your cardio for 30 minutes before your workout, which I've definitely seen before, kind of acting as a little bit of a warm up. Now, you know, maybe a couple of minutes before whatever, get your heart pumping, blood flow and whatever, literally just do it as a warm up. That's cool. But if you're doing a legit 30 minutes of cardio before your lift and you're breaking a sweat and you're really like huffing and puffing, and then you want to start your weights, uh, I think you just kind of compromise the lift. Right? Cause you, you've got, you've only got so much energy in your fucking body to access. So if before a lift, you burn yourself out, maybe not burn out, but you tire yourself out, right? You use some energy from your system doing the cardio. I think you're not going to be able to go so intense on the workout. Now in a subjective sense, you could go just as intense, but you're not going to be lifting as many weights. Your performance metrics are more than likely going to be mitigated. So. It just doesn't make sense to me there. Now to come back and do the cardio at night and do the lift earlier on, uh, it's, I don't know. I mean, it, kind of following the same logic of like, after a lift, I want to just chill. I want to recover. You know, it's probably a, a little bit better than doing it directly afterwards. If you've got some meals in between, uh, you know, it's whatever, but I'd say best case scenario is doing it right in the morning when you fucking wake up, you know, you get your little cortisol spike. Assuming you have a reasonable circadian rhythm, you know, you take some caffeine, really wake up 30 minutes, break your sweat. For one thing, it's just out of the way. But then, you know, you get to start eating your meals, really kind of get nice and recovered. Like, I don't think I'm at all compromised in my lift from doing my 30 minutes of cardio, like more than four hours beforehand, because by then I will have replenished some fucking calories. I, you know, by I say that so specifically, it's like, I will have eaten some food. I'll build my energy back up. Right. And then I can lift super hard. Then after the lift, 
I'm done. I just get to chill and recover. You know, I think that's going to be the best method. Now, post lift, uh, I think doing it before your lift could potentially be detrimental. I think you could potentially kill some gains by doing your cardio post lift. Now, no, no, doing it pre lift. Pre lift, I think you could potentially kill some gains just because you're not going to get so good of a stimulus of your muscle from the workout itself, right? Because you're kind of compromising it in a sense, I think. Now, doing it post lift, probably not so much. I think post lift is a better option than pre lift for sure. And then later at night, it's, it's probably fine. You're probably all right, whatever. Now, pre lift, you're definitely improving your gains. Better metabolism, well, just from doing cardio in general, all those scenarios are potentially better than none, right? I don't think doing cardio, even pre lift, is going to put you in a worse state than not doing cardio at all. But, you know, I'm just saying, if you're going to do it, which I, apparently is a big if, doing it in the morning is going to be your best bet. It's going to be the best bang for your buck, to put it simply. So I'm going to go home, eat my flank, watch some more um, Golden Wind. I've rewatched that a couple of times. They're all good. Part three is good. Part four is good. Uh, they're all good. But I think if we're think if we're looking at it objectively, I think part five is the best. Just storyline everything. So that's probably the one I rewatched the most. But don't get me wrong, part three is fucking badass too. So I'm going to park this mofo. Eat. I'll freaking see you next time.